Hey everybody, uh, it's Eric, aka Razor Mice, aka Gordon Freeman, 20 years later. Um, but seriously, I'm here working on my Rolling Robots project. I have an update. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, so I feel like I owed you a new video. I probably won't, uh, well, I'm not going to be showing uh, BB-8 rolling around at the moment because that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, turns out, uh, maybe you've seen some of the other videos. I had some, some rolling things around. And I've been working on, my, my design is based around this kind of hub where the uh, robot, uh, it, is a, it is a single axle drive. And unlike other uh, designs, or actually kind of like the red carpet design, uh, there's a... Uh, a hub that goes uh, from the sides, extends toward the middle, and this is basically an axle that spins with the sphere and not with the inside. So it's not like motors uh, mounted at the ends. It's actually a solid thing. But mine split in the, ha in, in the middle so that it leaves room for the head. And I rely on these, these kind of hubs to, to uh, you know, get everything cantilevered out. And the issue is, why is that blinking? Maybe we're running out of space, who knows? Anyway, the issue is these need to be really strong, stronger than I had first imagined. Um, this version uh, weighed something like 128 grams. Uh, it was really just a placeholder. And uh, as, as a lot of people predicted, and, uh, and as James Bruton uh, warned, there's a lot of torque <laughs> in here at the, towards the center as you're trying to spin this thing, especially, you know, we have like 20 pounds uh, in, the, in the drive system that's spinning around. And it really was all rotating at this point here. And eventually, if you can I'll just kind of like zoom in, hopefully uh, it auto focuses, it just twisted this right off. Um, and uh, clearly I did not have enough infill. Uh, I didn't, you know, you know really, it was, it was just a placeholder. It was kind of a cool looking design. Uh, it, I was actually surprised how well it held up. So anyway, had to do something about this. That's uh, the, the, one of the big setbacks at the moment. Not a setback. Now, this normally has this uh, aluminum shaft uh, actually connecting and, and with my um, pulley at the end of it. So that's really what gets driven. And the new version, uh, it actually, there's uh, set screws in there, little grub screws and nuts that uh, clamp this together. So this is hopefully works more or less as a monolithic piece. And this is the new design. Now, uh, it's different in a lot of ways. It's a multi-part design. And the big reason for that is when you're 3D printing, there, parts are a lot stronger if they print flat on the bed, right? Because they have larger cross-sectional area, right? Normally when prints fail, a lot of prints fail basically because they split along the layers. Um, if you, you know, you print the right temperatures, you can, you know, kind of make that, you know, mini mitigate that, yeah, uh, to a large degree, but it's still, you know, if something's gonna fail, that's, that's a likely place for it to fail. So these long legs in the other version, Ta-da, look where it failed, right along those layer lines, of course. So, could add more, you know, go infill, make it much heavier and so on. But instead, I wanted to kind of use a multi-part design so I could print this flat on the bed. And this, there is a bit of a layer line issue with this guy up here, but it's, it's not really that important because that's really just clamps things together. This is where all the strength is in this, the, the lengthwise, the leg here, right? So this prints flat and this profile prints as a, you know, uh, layer to layer. So that's, this is really strong. This is a much, much, much stronger piece than if it had been, you know, printed the other way around. Now, that's not to say, I, okay, hold on a second. Uh, sorry about that. I could reshoot the video, but that wouldn't be any fun. Okay. There are certain parts around it that you like to have round and print in that orientation though, like this guy. This is the actual thing the tube goes into. Okay. So that's gonna go into there and that's never gonna split in that direction because it's all clamped there. Now you'll notice this cool thing that I have built in here, the split with uh, some screw holes in there. And what that is, that basically forms a clamp. It's already pretty tight, but I put a uh, M5 screw and a nut in there, and I use a uh, nylock uh, nut on there so it clamps real nicely. And that, that really clamps everything to the tube, puts it all together nicely. And uh, 
I don't actually connect this pulley mechanically to the uh, extended hub. Now the reason for that is if things do get crazy and this turns or things twist, it's gonna, you know, yeah, things will get a little bit loose here and maybe get a little, you know, slide, but they're not gonna break, right? That's, so it, it, it will fail very gracefully. <laughs> it's not gonna snap and fall off. It's just gonna kind of loosen up here. But hopefully every, as everything's tight and, and so on, and there's some things we can do to like, you know, kind of lock that all together, you know, thread lock and so on. Um, so, okay, how does it go together? All right, we got this thing. We have a leg. The legs fit into these little parts in here. All right, and there's also this stiffener, this base that I have here, and you'll notice it has uh, inset nuts in there, and they're just kind of press fit. Uh, sometimes I hit them with a heat gun, but there's what they're what really attaches this whole thing to the sphere. There's matching holes that go straight through the sphere out all the way to the outside, so this all gets clamped together. So this goes together like that, and. Grab a couple of them. I'm not going to screw it together because this actually screws to the sphere, but you'll notice there is holes in the edges here, so it can, there are the uh, screws that go all the way through there as well. That all comes together like that. This goes in here like this. <laughs> and voila. Once all the screws go in, it's rock solid. Until the screws go in, it can fall apart, which is, uh, well, actually, once it gets kind of shoved together the right way, it's, it, even that becomes pretty, pretty strong. Uh, the tolerances are really kind of, really close. Once I have it together, it really kind of just friction fits together. Um, I was careful to make sure you can get at this. Let me grab that other piece. Okay. Um, so this locks in like this. Uh, you'll notice all the clearances are there to make sure everything gets together. This is a little heavier than the other one, not by that much, by like 60 grams. Um, I'm gonna work on, you know, eventually, uh, I wanna make it even lighter. But I did make up the difference by changing my hub adapter, for now at least. The old hub adapter was like this, um, which was a bit overkill. It really just needs to be a spacer. Uh, so the new version looks like this. And it's less about the exterior perimeters and more a little bit about the infill. So this one actually has more infill, but less perimeters and things, which the top is a little bit, um, cosmetically it doesn't look as great, but, but structurally it's actually better. So that attaches to that so that it matches the curve of the sphere and it matches these, the whole patterns that are in Carrie's design. So that all locks together really nicely. And I have one of them already in there. And uh, I put one in and I was like, well, maybe the other one, the, the old hub will last for a while. And, and within a few trial runs, it snapped off. So now I've got one installed and I know it's working really nicely and it's really rigid. And I gotta get this other one in there. But I wanted to explain it before putting it in the body. Okay, so another thing I noticed, I've been really working a lot with Spinning. Uh, I have my flywheels and I've been working on some, some even some new alternate uh, designs. You may have seen the CAD versions of this um, so that the, the, the flywheels basically sit lower, uh, the motors sit lower in there and I've got some things that you'll, some surprises along the lines. But the main thing I've discovered that I wanted to mention is the uh, relevance of the weight of the sphere to how well it spins, okay? Um, with the flywheels, basically the flywheel has to be enough mass to counteract the weight of the body. You want to, you want basically the motors in there are spinning the body around a mass that's the flywheels. That's sort of really what happens. It's not so much, you know, we, we think that it's uh, doing, you know, all kinds of gyroscopic things. No, not really. It's basically overcoming inertia. You know, that everything wants to stay still. You spin the body around this mass that wants to stay still. That's what makes the body spin. So, of course, the problem is that the heavier the body is, the heavier the flywheels have to be because they have to you know, counteract the weight of the body and the head and, and so on and so forth. Uh, looking at the red carpet design, there's not all these kind of crazy 
uh, extra weights. It doesn't look that way at least. You know, it's very, very lightweight design. You've got the, the batteries basically on the flywheel, not a lot of lead weights in there. And that's got me thinking, wow, their design must be super light. Um, or at least, you know, it, they, they're very deliberate in terms of where their weight is. So I'm trying to take that in a lot more account. And one of the big things I've been looking at is our favorite, our panels. Um, because fact of the matter is, the one thing we don't know about the red carpet design right now at this point is how heavy is the actual sphere. Uh, most of the successful DIY versions, you know, if you look at Ed's and, and a lot of the other ones that are out there, they're using just the California quality plastics polycarbonate dome, and the skins aren't on those. So overall, I mean, this, this thing weighs 8.8 .8 ounces, right? So eight of these is going to add four plus pounds, almost, you know, four or five pounds. Uh, by the time you add on the orange rings and the and the circles, we're easily into 10 pounds, uh, you know, uh, getting close to 10 pounds, 6 to 10 pounds uh, on the uh, the weight of the skins. I, I'm, I'm not faulting anyone for that. It's just that's weight that the flywheels, that's, you know, that the flywheels have to overcome, that the body has to overcome. So I'm really interested in trying to figure out ways to lighten up these guys. Uh, this was a 50% infill. Uh, I'm sort of convinced it doesn't need to be 50%. Um, it doesn't have to, you know, it's really there. Most of it is about cosmetics. It is a sphere after all, so spheres are pretty good. I mean, look at eggs, right? They Eggs uh, have really, really thin shells and they manage to, to, you know, withstand all sorts of pressures as they're being laid. I've got eggs, I've got, I've got chickens, so I know about what happens when a poor egg goes through. Anyway, so really really want to lighten this up i'm looking at my my uh carrie's uh skeleton see okay how can that be he's got some exciting new things going on um with injection molding and stuff like that and so hopefully that might be a path but fantasy goal at this point is to get the body uh and by body i mean panels circles triangles and skeleton i'd love to get that below 10 pounds um i think that's that should be doable i'm betting that the red carpet, uh, the red carpet droid, the skins weigh less than 10 pounds. I mean, the whole sphere weighs less than 10 pounds. And of course, we're gonna wanna keep the head as light as possible, because that's gonna contribute as well. Uh, and we wanna have a counterweight for the head, so and basically we have, you know, in, in the, the perfectly counterweighted world, we have a 2X, you know, 2X times the head uh, weight that we need to deal with as well. So these things are all factoring in. They factor in how heavy our motors need to be, how heavy our flywheels need to be, how strong our motors need to be. And it's that arms race, right? Oh, okay, let's add more weight to the flywheels. Okay, let's add more, you know, stronger motors. And then, well, you know, what do you know? Oh, okay, now the motors are heavier. And now that, so we need more weight to counteract the motors and so on. So uh, I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, trying to, to, to nip it in the bud and see, okay, can we uh, address the root cause, which is overall weight? So let's look at our 3D printer settings. Let's investigate other materials. I have some uh, HIPS, high impact polystyrene, which is interesting stuff. It's a little bit trickier to print than PLA though. It's, you know, it's kind of like, got a lot of things about like ABS. Um, I've seen it like to uh, uh, basically, you know, the interlayer adhesion is more of an issue. You need a heated bed. Um, it does tend to warp more, but it is very lightweight. It's about 10% lighter. HIPS is about 10% lighter than either PETG or PLA or ABS. So it's very interesting. I mean, I'm not gonna roll it around in limoline, so I don't have to worry about dissolving. Um, so uh, it, it could be very interesting. I wanna go there. I was looking at uh, polypropylene as well, but supposedly that's really tough to print. Maybe we'll get into that at some point if I get my hands on some. Um, I'm also interested, rather than just finding lighter material, the smarter you are about the infill and the smarter you are about the design, maybe we can use more high performance plastics, right? There's, there's like high performance PLA out there. Uh, Maker Geeks has their Raptor. Uh, um, the guys at E3D have their, uh, have some, some really interesting uh, plastics out there. Uh, Ninja Flex, you know, the Ninja Tech certainly has a whole bunch of new products, their Armadillo product and so on. So maybe, you know, it's not necessarily about adding more plastic, but adding good plastic and plastic in the right spaces and the right, right ways. So that's, that's the grail uh, of things. Trying to get the, the, the sphere a lot lighter. Um, I'm gonna be you know, revisiting all the parts of the drivetrain to see, okay, where can I cut down on things? What can, things can be sort of bridged out and so on. I'm pretty happy with how the motors are working out. You know, my, I have enough power in there to kind of spin things around. Um, I'm revisiting how the flywheels are made so I can change the balance of, of power on the, the drivetrain versus the actual uh, 
weight that's on the flywheels themselves. So, okay, I'm rambling. Um, anything else I should show you while you're here? Uh, I think slip rings are gonna wind up playing a more important factor into a lot of things. My motor collection continues to grow. Um, got a few of these, uh, somebody uh, gave me some Bainbots motors, but I don't think I'm gonna throw those in there just yet. Um, some really weird motors from Canon. Um, and the motors that I'm relying on mostly right now are these uh, Lynx Motion. Uh, I get them from Robo Ch Robot Shop, uh, and those are the, my go-to motors right now. They're 300, these, the, the, the flywheel ones are 300 RPMs. Don't run out and buy anything just yet, because who knows, I may be changing a bunch of stuff about the flywheels. Um, and I use same form factor in the body uh, for the drive as, as the flywheels right now but who knows. Um, got a bunch of stuff coming from eBay. We'll take a look at stuff sort of influenced, some of it influenced by the red carpet design. I'm not going full hog on the, on the red carpet design. I'm sticking my guns on this one. Uh, I think there's some interesting things you can do with dual flywheels. So, okay, I've rambled enough. Uh, until next time, this is Eric, AKA Race Mace. And like I said, the 20 years later version of Gordon Freeman, maybe uh, I should use that uh, my next uh, big cosplay thing, um, embrace that. Um, okay, uh, this is the Racer Mice uh, Rolling Robots Project here on the LearnMax channel. Till next time.